So many of you have asked where to start with this channel in terms of learning about childhood trauma and the effects of it, because now at this point, there's a lot of videos to dig through. And whether you're struggling to afford therapy or you're actually in therapy and need things to bring in or talk about or think about, I love hearing from you all that this channel is a good resource or you're getting a lot out of it. That just like makes my heart sing. So, but instead of being overwhelmed with where to dive in, here's what I would consider is a good sequence of processing and thinking about our childhood trauma from our family of origin. And yes, there's a lot of different sources of trauma, but this channel is really about recovering from an abusive family or off family system of origin during our crucial development. So I'm gonna go through step-by-step -step videos in order to, to where, kind of like where everybody should start despite maybe where you're at in your recovery, and then add the ones that might be more specific to like some problems that you're having, um, such as say like things like anxiety at night, anxiety at the morning, Morning, like that kind of a thing. And the best way to use this channel is to take things slow and journal or take notes while you're watching. Many of the videos I try to include journaling prompts about inner child work to help process and not just name problems like here's five things, you know. So I'm told the videos are also kind of dense and intense. <laughs> Someone gave me that feedback about my work is like, which kind of made me laugh because it's so true. So going too fast might not allow you to take it all in. Some people have told me that they kind of watch the videos a bunch of times and get different ideas from them each time. If you're new to me or new to the channel, welcome. If you like this video, feel free to hit some buttons on the screen. You can't miss with any of the buttons, especially the like or the subscribe button, which greatly increases the, the, the breadth of like this channel and creating a community around childhood trauma. And if these videos are helpful to you in your recovery, you can consider supporting the work that goes into this channel over at my Patreon. And in addition, you can go to my website and do some childhood trauma e-course work that I offer there, including all the recordings of the web webinars that I've done, they're all there as well. In other exciting news, I have two childhood trauma groups forming in my practice. I have clinicians forming groups in Massachusetts as well as North Carolina. They are skilled trainees of mine. They're doing their own work. Um, and if you're in these states, just shoot me an email through my website to connect and ask how to sort of apply for a spot in one of those groups. Why these specific states? Well, these are trainees and it's, it's specific to licensure. They have to be practicing in the state that they're getting their license in, so I'm sorry that I don't have more resources, but there are others listed on my website who can also provide childhood trauma services if you just go to the resources part of the website. Um, and if you follow this white ball up here, takes you right to my website about inquiring about those groups or in general. So let's dive into this sequence on how to use this channel as a childhood trauma like sort of course to learn about it. So the first video is something called what I, was I abused? I created a 60 question questionnaire. 30 of them are highlighted in the video. And yes, you'll most likely score high on that. But I think the questions are, are more important than the scoring because they specifically, those questions specifically resonate with childhood survivors in a very specific way. I made this video to break up the paradigm of something called the ACE study, which, um, which kind of excludes the majority of people that went through childhood trauma. They only give you a small, here's what really what we think childhood trauma is. And the benefit here is that the questionnaire and the questions get you really thinking about your family system of origin and the impact of it. This video is approaching 2 million views. It's also available in Spanish and French as well. You just used a search feature. So that's the first video that I would start with. It's one of my first videos. Coming up at number two is a video entitled Six Unknown Childhood Trauma Triggers. Building on those ideas, this video explores what I see as very common issues for child to trauma survivors. It's all stuff that I've learned sort of in my own recovery and from the, the people who are my clients. Um, things such as ambiguity as being a trigger for us. Um, and this video really gets the viewer to think about the where and the how our issues like being triggered to things like being thoughtless and oblivious people. We get triggered to people like that, where those specific triggers come from. It'll definitely name some things for you. This video is now approaching 2 million views. Coming in at number three is my seven types of toxic family systems. This is really about family systems and thinking about your family of 
origin, you'll most likely find your family on this. I'm using genograms to spell out the different types of families. Um, and you'll most likely find your family on there. And many of the families overlap. So try not to think about it as like, where's my specific family? You might identify between with four or five of the seven types and they definitely can overlap. Um, this video sharpens the lens of connecting the dots between your present stuck places and how you were raised. This video is approaching a million views. There is a follow-up video of contrasting the seven toxic family systems with their opposite, like seven healthy family systems, and that will be in the sequence as well. Moving on to number four, a video titled What It Means to Be Triggered, a much lesser known video done early in the channel. It covers specific signs that we're triggered um, as I learned them from my mentor, what it means for us phys physiologically and how to differentiate um, between what is the thing going on in the present and what is actually the trigger. I talk about something called my 80-20 rule as a formula to use to get out of being triggered faster. It's an animated video, so you'll kind of get that from the um, from the thumbnail. And if you're a visual person, it's, it's, it's great. And it's rooted in a handout I use for my mentor in every group. And I kind of all want you to watch that one because it's really about distinguishing your specific triggers. Having that ability makes everything work better. Number five is a video called Six Lies from Childhood Trauma. This video explores how beliefs are a direct result of how we were parented and what was modeled for us. So lies such as sex is bad or the real you isn't acceptable helps to help us define some universal stuck places and answer some big questions. This is another connect the dots video connecting issues from our childhood trauma. Um, and these are lies. These are, these are things that are untrue, things that we either had to come up with our own or what, what we were modeled or what we were directly told. Um, and I want you to feel motivated that they are fixable. This video is now approaching a million views. Moving on to number six, this is a series of videos that I've done. It's not just one video. These are a series called the Adult in the Inner Child episodes. I did a series on inner child work called the Adult in the Inner Child episodes. The first two episodes really helped define the concept of what the inner child is. I talk about Bradshaw there, what our inner adult is and how it all works and how they give specific therapy ideas on how working on how to work with our inner child. Um, then the episodes move into more specific problems such as sort of attachment wounds or anxiety at night. Um, on, on, and they're done in a specific inner child framework. There are lots of exercises and journaling prompts in that series. Here is a list of that of, of all the episodes in that series. There's the adult and the inner child part one. Uh, episode two is I get into Bradshaw there, a continuation of part one. Episode three is the, uh, the inner child and attachment theory. Um, number four is something called my first GI Joe. This is a personal story about my own childhood trauma, emotional neglect as a teaching moment. Episode five is a, love that episode. It's a, it's a guided inner child meditation on how to connect with our inner child and explore how our inner child feels about us. Really check that one out. Episode number six is something called anxiety at night. Then people ask for another episode on that about in the morning. So episode seven is anxiety in the morning as requested. And episode eight is around sibling abuse, which is an often, um, I get that request quite a lot. So I did a video on the sibling abuse in context of the whole family system and the inner child. Um, I pause these episodes after thinking they might be better served as a podcast. You know, I get that request sometimes too. If you would like to see me do like a one day a week podcast, I would, I'm, um, working on that idea. I would love some encouragement if you think that that would be cool for you to kind of take it in in a different way. Moving on to number seven is a role play that I did um, between the adult and the inner child. It's just called Inner Child Role Play Narcissistic Parent Recovery Part One. It's a great follow up from the episode series that I just mentioned. Between, and it's a role play between our adult and our inner child, highlight, highlighting how the inner adult can behave kind of like our abusive parents and then doing it in a more healthy way. A lot of a struggle with the idea of the inner child where it's often that the adult doesn't want the job and the inner child doesn't trust the adult and that's 
what it means to really be disconnected from ourselves. So highly recommend checking that out. There's also a clinical analysis to that role play, which is a lot of my role plays about that. So I recommend checking them both out. They'll be in the sequence as well. Moving on to number eight is a video called the 30 day inner child challenge. So in the sequence, we're really focusing on the inner child work. Um, this is a month long exercise. It's an animated video about becoming aware of how our inner child and our childhood trauma kind of pops up throughout our waking hours pops up through the day um, and it's about learning how to be more on top of it how to monitor it how to stay more in our adult and you'll need it it's a specific tool oriented video so you'll need an object like a stuffed animal or a rock that you're that represents your inner child that is with you at all times so there's kind of this take the thing with you at all times and be aware what's going on when you go to work, if you do go to work. Um, when you're at Starbucks, when you're at your kid's parent-teacher conferencing, all that kind of stuff, to notice how it comes up. That's what's going on with that video. Number nine is these are abusive and toxic parent role plays. So there's a sequence here of, of a bunch of role plays that I've done. This might be really, the role plays are really what might the channel be mo might be most known for. Um, the role plays are done just like how my mentor, Amanda Curtin, LICSW, modeled for them and when I was a client in one of our childhood trauma groups. Um, it's done, the role plays are done in a sequence of different ways. So the first part of the role plays is usually um, the how we act out how the parent and the child really kind of interact, the abusive parent, how all that stuff plays itself out. The second part, if we do the same exact thing, but what would it be like if the parent was healthy? And then the third part is about the adult child becomes empowered and really sort of sets boundaries and stands up to the adult, which actually kind of triggers a lot of people to be honest, but that's what I'm trying to model there. You can use those role plays to learn about everything from cluster B diagnoses um, or really or really seek out the, the parental figure you had or what kind of abusive parent you had instead of just being kind of confused. These, this, these videos, I think people are drawn to it because it really names something for them. Many of the role plays have a part two to them, which is when I do a clinical analysis video about the role play that I just did, about the parent's pathology, the impact on the children, and what's going on for the adult trauma survivor, how they might struggle in relationships because of that parent. So I highly, highly suggest you go check out the clinical analysis videos. Um, they're kind of a lesser known kind of a thing, but they're really, all those role plays are pretty much done in a part one, part two. So here's a list of the role plays. There is the narcissistic mother, the clinical analysis that follows afterward, which is like the first role play I think I did. There's another one, number two would be the enmeshed and codependent. You don't have to watch these in sequence, I'm just listing the role plays. Enmeshed and codependent mother-daughter with the clinical analysis afterward. Then there's number three, a malignant narcissistic father clinical analysis afterward. There's a covert narcissistic father with a clinical analysis. Number five is a narcissistic parent and ownership. If you ever try to get a parent to come clean, that's the video for you, followed up by a clinical analysis. Number six is a codependent mother um, mom is wrapped up in an abusive spouse and how that interacts with their adult child. Clinical analysis after that one. Number seven, there's one called Flying Monkeys where the family gangs up on one childhood trauma survivor with a clinical analysis after that. Then there's number eight, which is a gray rock daughter video standing up to a narcissistic parent, clinical analysis as well. And number nine is um, the petulant borderline mother and a clinical analysis after that. Whew. <laughs> I've been busy. All right, so not every cluster B or abusive family parent style is represented there, but you'll get the idea about the role plays. Just try not to think about it. You need to just watch a couple of them and you'll get the vibe. The analysis videos are great if you have lingering questions and want to connect the dots about your present stuck places and problems from having been raised by such parents. And then moving on, number 10 is really sort of videos that are about common childhood trauma problems. Here are videos that I've done in attempting to tackle very common and kind of specific problems that are mostly universal to childhood trauma survivors. So you don't have to watch these in sequence of these problem videos. I'm just listing them as, as sort of like the ones that you can check out if you want to. There's a video called, Do You Gaslight Yourself? When we, a lot of our inner child is spent really second guessing and self-sabotaging, that kind of stuff. Number two is, was your other parent narcissistic too? People tell me that that was their most important video that they've ever seen on this channel because it really looks at, what about the other parent, the lesser 
um, the seemingly lesser abusive parent. We have more work to do with that parent, the parent who didn't protect us. Number three is, is there cheap intimacy in your family? That's the title uh, where I walk through something called the Cartman drama triangle, where there's all kinds of triangulation and alliances in the family system. I think that video is animated as well as the other parent being narcissistic too. Number four is a, a standalone video, why are they threatened by your emotions? This is a video about angry, dismissive people in general, as well as in our family. People who really are threatened by other people's emotions and just do the kibosh on the whole thing. Um, you can really feel shut out by a person like that and really shamed by a person like that. Number five is um, toxic shame from childhood trauma. There's part one, there's part two. That actually led to a webinar that's available on my website because I got so much response from that video. Number six is types of invalidating parents. It's a role play actually, walking through different ways that a toxic parent can can have, you know, act out where their kids really don't see them, where their kids really don't feel seen. Highly recommend checking out that one. Um, number seven is five types of work triggers, linking how work is a lot like our toxic family systems of origin. Number eight is childhood trauma and dating. It is an animated video about how because of our childhoods, our dating, our dating radar or our judge of character is really off. That's a video on how to work on that. Number nine is an, in another animated video as well as the prior one about how to do a family cutoff. Specific instructions about going no contact really spells out what the family system is like that warrants a cutoff, that kind of a thing. Um, number 10 is an invalidating therapist role play that I did. Um, how to kind of avoid bad therapy treatment and what to look for in a good therapist um, when you're seeking work to, that, that is related to childhood trauma. Number 11 is codependency and childhood trauma. Number 12 is two therapy sessions with a cheating narcissist. That one's a role play. There's a clinical analysis after that. Number 13 is four ways getting out of survival mode. Most of us live in it. And I get into the concept of doing some rage work in that one. Number 14 is examples of uh, three examples of unfinished business from childhood trauma that falls into sort of the category of one of the most important parts of the RRP model of work that I do is the first is reclaiming intimacy. The second is finishing business with our family system of origin. Um, number 15 is <laughs> how to stop your relationship fights using the one, two, three process. Number 16 is the one, two, three process relationship tool. And number 17 is six, type, six types of childhood trauma that happens and it originates in the school system in context of the family. There are videos about differentiating childhood trauma or CPTSD from other diagnoses. So this is really the, the 11th part of the sequence. Um, we're, we're getting into some ideas. A lot of people struggle with, is it trauma? Is it ADHD? Am I a narcissist? And there's a series of videos that get into that and contrast it with just regular old CPTSD from childhood trauma and the issues such as being highly sensitive, autism spectrum disorders, ADHD. So here the list, It's there's there are four of them. There's ADHD in childhood trauma, there's NPD in childhood trauma, there's the highly sensitive person contrasted with trauma, and then there's um, the autism spectrum disorder video and childhood trauma. In many of those, you can have both going on, but our minds are wired to think which one is, is it? There's Venn diagrams all over the place in those things, as well as some infographics, and I hope that those are helpful. Lastly, lastly, I strongly encourage you to watch the interview videos that I've done with my mentor, Amanda Curtin, LICSW, who developed the RRP model of childhood trauma, which is simply the relationship recovery program. It's relationship to ourselves. It's the relationship to others, reclaiming intimacy and really looking at the family system of origin. And trauma is rooted in disconnection. So that's why intimacy work is such a big part of it. There's the full video with Amanda Curtin. There's the RRP video with Amanda Curtin. And then the, we, did a, we did this other video about the problems of, of of getting men into therapy or why there's resistance for men to come into therapy or this specific therapy in general. So 
There, I think you have it. I've created kind of an in-order playlist that you, is gonna be um, either in the description, and it's gonna be somewhere very visible, and it's a playlist exactly like I've walked through all of them, every video that I just talked about, and you can share it, you can bookmark it, you can track where you're at, work with it with every in any way that kind of works best for you. So there's somewhat of a sequence to it, and it, but it doesn't have to be exactly done in order. So try not to get con too concrete about it, like you have to go through the whole thing Thing. you can sort of pick and choose and that kind of a thing it's just a general suggestion um, and because it is kind of overwhelming to just jump into this stuff so I hope that it was helpful to you I'd love to hear about it if it was if there was something specific that you would like to see as a video I would love to hear about that and for those that do tell me they want to see things I read the emails I take it in I apologize I just don't have the the ability to respond to every email but I do love your ideas and I do love how specific they are so hope that was helpful and as always may you be filled with loving kindness may you be well May you be peaceful and at ease, and may you be joyous. And I will see you all next time.